transcribed. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the Railroad Hour. <laughs> and here comes our star-studded show train. Tonight, the Association of American Railroads brings you Paramount Pictures' great Irving Berlin musical success, Holiday Inn, starring Gordon McRae and his guest from the Metropolitan Opera, Dorothy Kirsten. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. Yes, tonight, another thrilling musical success is brought to you by the American Railroads, the same railroads that bring you most of the food you eat, the clothes you wear, the fuel you burn and all the other things you use in your daily life. And now, here is our star, Gordon McRae. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Marvin Miller, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Well, sir, Dorothy Kirsten and I have a wonderful invitation for you. It's inscribed with the musical magic of Mr. Irving Berlin, and you're all invited. Happy holiday! Happy holiday! If you're burdened down with trouble, if your nerves are wearing thin, park your load down the road and come to Holiday Inn. If the traffic noise affects you like a squeaky violin, kick your cares down the stairs and come to Holiday Inn. Happy Holiday! Happy Holiday! Happy Holiday! Christmas. Thank you. Can you tell me where I can find the owner of Holiday Inn, Mr. Jim Hardy? Uh, my best friend. He's a wonderful guy, really. Uh, would you tell him that Linda Mason is here to see him? Oh, he'll be delighted to see you. I know, because I'm Jim Hardy. Oh, forgive me. <laughs> oh, what a darling place. Yeah, sure is. Built by a fellow who was too lazy to work 365 days a year, so he decided to open an inn that would run only on holidays. Brilliant idea, don't you think? Dreamed up by this brilliant friend of yours, Jim Hardy. Yep. <laughs> but tell me, what are you doing way up in the wilds of Connecticut on Christmas? Oh, I heard about Holiday Inn, and I wanted to see it. Well, I'm afraid it's not open yet. I spent all my money on lumber, and I couldn't talk any performers into working up here for nothing. Oh, I'd perform for you for nothing. Oh, what do you do? Oh, sing a little and dance a little. Well, come on over to the piano. You know, I've written special music for each holiday, and this sort of gives me a chance to keep a little promise I made to myself. I said I was going to sing this song at the end of the night, and it looks like I'm going to. I'm dreaming of a white Christmas Just like the ones I used to know And children listen to hear sleigh bells in the snow.
You try it. I'll, uh, I'll prompt you. All right. I'm dreaming of a white Christmas. Good. Just like? Just like the ones I used to know. Where the treetops glisten. Where the treetops glisten. And children listen. And children grand opening New Year's Eve after all. Uh, by the way, there's only one proviso in this verbal contract. Do you ever hear of Ted Hanover? Famous dancer? Sure. Mm -hmm. Well, it seems every time I find a girl, she's suddenly the only girl in the world for Ted Hanover. <laughs> so I, uh, I just want you to steer clear of Mr. H. Don't worry. You know, Linda, it's beginning to look like a happy, lovely New Year. Oh, man, the place is packed. Oh, who said Holiday Inn wouldn't work? Ready for your number, sweetie? Sure. Look at the clock. My goodness, 11.59. Ta-ta, old year. Ha, <laughs> it's almost time. Practically straight up. One minute to midnight. One minute to go. One minute to say goodbye before we say hello. Let's start the new year right. Twelve o'clock tonight When they dim the light Let's begin Kissing the old year out Kissing the new year in Let's watch the old year die With a fond goodbye And our hopes is high a car. How can your love go on if we start the new year on? Happy New Year! Happy New Year! Oh, that's it. Happy New Year, Linda. Happy New Year, Jim. I'll see you out on the floor. All right. Hey, little lady, will you dance with me? I beg your pardon, Mr. Hanover. Oh, you're Ted Hanover. Yeah, my dancing partner left me, so I'm slumming in the hayloss of Connecticut. Come on, let's dance. Oh, Mr. Hanover, I can't. The music, music, please. Oh, please, Mr. Hanover, but it's, Come on. it's in my contract. I, I, I just, I just can't. Over in a new partner. Ladies and gentlemen, I. Uh... Oh, you surprised us all, Mr. Hardy. Imagine letting us see Ted Hanover and his new partner. Well, here we go again. Oh, oh, where am I? Oh, good morning. Oh, morning. You're at Holiday Inn, Ted, and the holiday is over. Oh, no. Look, Jim, something happened last night. I met a girl, and I've got to have her as my dancing partner. Girl? Girl? Yeah, everything was so blurred in the New Year's Eve excitement, I, I didn't even get her name. I, Jim, you've got to help me out. Who was she? Who? Oh, I, I think I remember. It must have been that girl with an evening gown on with a belt in the back. 
Yeah, it built just like a girlfriend of mine, Miss Consuela Schlepkiss. <laughs> yeah, I remember. Consuela used to play the pinball machine down at the corner drugstore. High man, three weeks in a row. <laughs> oh, no. Hey, look, wait a minute. She'll be here at Holiday Inn the next time you're open. She will? Sure, sure. When's the next holiday? Let me see. January, January, nothing more than January, February. February 12th, Lincoln's birthday. <laughs> I'm sure to find her here then. Oh, Mr. Lincoln, why was you born? You decent, Linda? Can I come in your dressing room? Come in, Jim. Yeah. Happy Lincoln's birthday. Yeah, yeah. Say, Linda, I've decided our number will go better if we do it in blackface. Oh. What's the matter with that? Well, for a month and a half, I've been dreaming about how pretty I was going to look tonight. Now, sweetheart, you'll have plenty of times to be pretty. Here, I'll help you put it on. I, uh, I broke in as a boot black, you know. Uh, nobody's going to recognize me. <laughs> Ain't it the truth? <laughs> Come in. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Holiday Inn salutes the 12th of February. February morn, a tiny baby boy was born, Abraham, Abraham. When he growed up, this tiny babe, the folks all called him Honest Abe, Abraham, oh Abraham. Now in 1860, he became the 16th president. Now he's in the Hall of Fame, a most respected gent. And that is why we celebrate this blessed February date. Abraham, oh Abraham. The country going to the dawn, they shouted long, long. They from a cabin made a loss, the right man came along. Whose name was Nancy Hank? Abraham. Oh, Abraham. She gave this land the finest son who ever went to Washington. Abraham. 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 When someone called him General Grant was drinking every night, he answered, Go see if you can't get all my generals tight. That's why we celebrate this blessed February day. Abraham was a real fine man. Abraham. Hello, hello. Are you still there in New York? Oh, oh, Danny. Danny, this is Ted Hanover. Now, look, as my agent, you've got to help me find this gal. Lord knows how long I'll have to wait for another Jim's blasted holiday. Huh? When? When? Day after tomorrow's another holiday? <laughs> well, sure, sure, I'll stick around. Happy Valentine's Day! <laughs> Holiday Inn in just a moment. A basic part of America's richly productive economy is the nation's transportation system, the biggest and most efficient in the world. For over the myriad arteries of our many forms of transportation flow all the things we need and use at home and at work. And forming the foundation of this great transportation network are our railroads, operating thousands of trains over some 400,000 miles of track, extending into every section of the country. Carrying the very lifeblood of our commerce, these railroads are doing the biggest and most essential of all transportation jobs. According to calculations of the Bureau of Transport Economics and Statistics of the Interstate Commerce Commission, 
which take account of both tons loaded and distances hauled, railroads are moving more tons of freight more miles between our cities than all other forms of transportation combined. Last year, for example, railroads produced nearly five times as much interstate freight transportation service as all the motor trucks in the country. Unlike other transport agencies, railroads provide an all-commodity, all-season, and continent-wide service. And it's done with an economy in the use of manpower, fuel, and materials, which no other form of transportation offering anything resembling a general and all-round service even approaches. Yes, America has a great transportation system, a system in which no other medium of transport, nor all of them combined, can take the place of railroads in doing the essential transportation job that our industry, agriculture, and commerce need in time of peace and must have in time of national emergency. Railroads are and will continue to be the transportation cornerstone on which is built the amazingly productive economy of our nation. Here is Act Two of Paramount Pictures' Holiday Inn, starring Gordon McRae as Jim Hardy and Dorothy Kirsten as Linda Mason. Oh, Jim, the inn looks so romantic with all those Valentine hearts. Well, I I posed for those cupids myself. (laughs) Here's something for you, Linda. Oh, Jim, it's the most beautiful valentine. I've never seen such a big heart. Well, go on, open it up. Why, it's music. Yes, sir, dedicated with love to Miss Linda Mason. Read what it says. Be careful. my heart It's not the note I send you that you quickly burn It's not the book I lend you things like this always have to happen to me. Oh, lady, lady, where have you been? I've been looking at you since New Year's Eve. For me, Mr. Hanover? Sure, sure. You're my new dancing partner. Where would you like to go? Havana, Rio, Hollywood, huh? Oh, I'd like to stay right here at Holiday Inn. Well, you can be here for the holidays and be my partner between times. Oh, I'll make you famous. Jim? Oh, go ahead. I don't want to hold up your career. But come home soon, huh? Straight wire to Mr. Jim Hardy, Holiday Inn, Midville, Connecticut. Regret booking in Florida for our new act makes it impossible to be there for Washington's birthday. See you Easter. Beth, Linda. Wire for Mr. Jim Hardy. Thank you. Oh, fine. Regret booking in New York makes it impossible to get there for Easter. Well, by golly, if she won't come here, I'm going there. Hello, Linda. Jim. Oh, Jim. I couldn't spend another holiday without you, honey. Would you uh, take Marm and join me for the day? Will I? You know, Fifth Avenue is the only place to spend Easter anyhow. 
Come on. Braid's ready to start. Never saw you look quite so pretty before. Never saw you dressed quite so lovely. What's more? why we brought Mr. Dunbar to Holiday Inn, Jimmy Boy. He's one of Hollywood's top directors, and he's offering all of us the opportunity of our lifetime. It does sound awfully good, Jim. Well, I don't know. Uh, I don't know, Mr. Dunbar. Well, the whole idea of Holiday Inn would make a wonderful picture, Hardy. And we'd like to star this sensational new dance team, Hanover and Mason. Now, you see, he didn't even give you top billing. Oh, come on, Jimmy Boy. How about it? We're all heading for Hollywood, the land of milk and honey. No, no, I'd like to keep this little place just the way it is, Ted. Oh, no, you're not going to be selfish and keep Linda from getting a big break, are you? Well, okay. Take the place. Take the idea, take the music, take the whole darn thing. But what about you, Jim? They want you to write the music. I'll send it to them. But I'll work here. Is that the deal you wanted? Or should I have thrown in my shirt, too? Dear Mr. Dunbar, I just finished the last of the Holiday Inn songs. It's one for Thanksgiving. And here it is, turkey time, sure enough. I've made a record of this little hunk of cranberry sauce. I pause in this letter to give it another spin, just to make sure all the notes are in the right place. I've got plenty to be thankful for. Are you kidding? I haven't got... Great big yacht to sail from shore to shore. No, Still, I've got plenty to be thankful for. You're really loaded, Dad. I've got plenty to be thankful for. Like what? No private car, caviar, no carpet on the floor. Still, I've got plenty to be thankful for. Who is this boy? I've got eyes to see with You need glasses Ears to hear with Arms to hug with Lips to kiss with Someone to adore You're a little flat, too Oh, how could anybody ask for more? The needs are small I buy them all at the five and ten cent store Oh, sing it, kid I've got plenty to be thankful for I've got plenty to be thankful for. By gosh, I'm not going to send this record to Hollywood. I'm going to send me. Quiet. Quiet on the set, please. All right, Miss Mason. We'll take the final shots in the set of Holiday Inn. 
Now, I think you have the mood. Your Hollywood success was empty. You've lost the one man you love. You know, the usual hope. All ready for rehearsal? Oh, let's shoot it, please. All right. It's a take. Lights up on the Christmas tree and dolly in for a close-up of this Linda Mason, alone in Holiday Inn. Ready? Roll on. Pretty lady. Oh, Jim, take me back to the real Holiday Inn. For every holiday? Every one. Every holiday of the year. <laughs> Not to mention all the wonderful days in between. May your day be merry. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Dorothy Kirsten will be back in just a moment. Our thanks to Tony Barrett, Forrest Taylor, and our entire company. Holiday Inn was dramatized for the Railroad Hour by Lawrence and Lee. The Railroad Hour is brought to you each week at this time by the American Railroads. America's steel industry is operating at record levels, turning out more steel than any other country in the world. But today there's a serious shortage of scrap, which makes up about half the content of new steel. Every business and industry can help keep the nation's steel production high by searching out every extra pound of iron and steel scrap of all kinds and starting it toward the mills through a scrap dealer. The railroads, for years one of the largest sources of scrap metal, are also intensifying their efforts to turn still more scrap back to the steel industry. And here again is lovely Dorothy Kirsten. show train next week, Gordon. Well, Rosemary, and guess who our guest is? Dorothy Kirsten. Gee, how'd you get her? Well, I don't know. <laughs> I'll see you next week, Dorothy. All aboard. Well, sir, it looks as though we're ready to pull out. And so until next week, this is Gordon McRae saying goodbye. <laughs> Holiday Inn was presented through the courtesy of Paramount Pictures, whose current release is Submarine Command, starring William Holden, William Bendix, and Nancy Olson. Gordon McRae can soon be seen in Warner Brothers' Starlift. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. This is Marvin Miller saying goodbye until next week for the American Railroad. Now keep tuned for your Monday night of music on NBC. <laughs> Proceeding was transcribed. Next, it's the telephone hour on NBC.